Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. Today we're going to be checking out the Orange Pi Zero 2W. It's a 4 gig model. It is a single board computer but it is really small. It's similar to like the Raspberry Pi Zero. It's got probably like double the power. And the Raspberry Pi Zero only comes with like 512 meg of RAM. Whereas this one you can get in 1 gig, 1.5 gig, 2 gig and 4 gig of RAM. It's powered by the all winner H618. It's a quad core Cortex A53 ARM processor and it clocks in at up to 1.5 gigahertz. It features the Mali G31 graphics processor. And yes, that's probably an entry level graphics processor for these SBCs, but I'm sure it'll get the job done. And you can see there's a little Wi Fi antenna. I don't know how strong this is, but this is a this is the totality of the board. We got two USB-C here. One is for power and one is for input. And, I, and then you have a um, mini HDMI, not a micro, a mini. The Raspberry Pi has a micro. You have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on this model. Over here, you have the slot for your micro SD. And then you have a header here for various projects and whatever. You also have a pin out here that you can attach the included pin header in case you want to do projects. You might be able to pull power from these last two since they're red as I know you can do that for fan headers on the Raspberry Pi. So if you are interested, link is below in the description. This is an Orange Pi Zero 2W 4 gigabyte model. Could I get and buy with the 2 gig model for around $5 less? Maybe. But I just want to see what this little thing can do. So right now I'm going to download the operating systems for this. It has images on the, Ras the Orange Pi site for Ubuntu. It also has the 6.1 kernel. That's decent. It's newer release. It has the Android OS. It also has the Orange Pi or Arch uh, distro and a couple others. Android version also fully supports the GPU accelerations. How does it perform in normal day tasks? How does the desktop feel? What does this operating system come with loaded? How does YouTube web surfing perform? What video playback can you expect? Can you do 1080p? Can you do 4K? That and a few other things are we gonna check out today for this mini Orange Pi Zero 2W 4 gig model. So without further ado, let's get right into it and check out this mini SBC from Orange Pi. Come on, let's go! Now let's plug this in. Got a USB hub for this and got my Raspberry Pi power supply. Let's see if we can get it to start. And let's see if we can get video out. Maybe it doesn't like to pass through. We got power on. I just don't know. Let's hook it up directly. Maybe there's a problem with uh, going through the uh, capture unit. Directly um, with the HDMI out. Um, so we've got no bootloader, which is great because I pulled the micro SD. Let's put it in and see if we can get it to boot now. Getting no signal with the SD card in there. Like, is it booting? It's not booting. I mean, I loaded the orange Pi Ubuntu on here. And it's not working. I'll try to reroute this again. Welcome to Orange Pi tri Trials and Tribulations. So it's not liking the micro SD card for some reason. It won't even post. That's quite the bullshit. Just took a quick look on the forums and a lot of people are saying that it's very finicky about the memory card you use. I'm using a Samsung 128 gig Evo and they're saying you need a SanDisk 64 gig. I've got one for my Raspberry Pi uh, 5 and I can flash the image on there and see if it works. But I also read that some of the 6.1 kernel Ubuntu's won't work at all for the 4 gig model. And yes, I downloaded the 4 gig version 
whether that matters or not, I don't know why. I'll grab the 64 gig SanDisk card, flash it with the 6.1 kernel, see if that works. It doesn't boot from that. Then I'm going to, in the meantime, flash Orange Pi Arch Linux on the Samsung 128 gig and try that one. Go from there. A lot of people had problems with some of these Orange Pi boards and maybe I'm one of them now, but let's keep troubleshooting and find out. Is it a memory card issue or is it just a crappy support from their images? Let's find out. Well, it looks like it's trying to boot. Will it boot? Will it load? Will it configure? Well, hope so. Can't get the video pass through to work for the capture card. So let's let this thing sit here and load it. So apparently that maybe the USB-C hub I have is working. So let's let us do his thing. Oh, oh, okay. We're here. We got the Orange Pi with logo and, uh, or this is Arch Linux Orange Pi OS. And we're running off of the Samsung 128 gig micro SD card. Apparently this works, maybe. Can we test it out? Let's do so. So let's go through the setup really quick. American English, do, do, do. fine. And we got the default keyboard, and do password, and it's gonna finish the setup. So this is Orange Pie Arch. This, by the way, is on the Samsung card, uh, the micro SD 128 gig. It wouldn't work with the 6.1 Ubuntu kernel. So let's uh, restart and uh, finish the setup. So we got the output capture to work and here we are at uh, 4K desktop resolution. I'm gonna put it back down to 1080p. Okay, yes, I would like to keep this configuration. Just kind of screwed everything up, but uh, okay. So we're still in the configuration phase. There's a couple other things here, identify new displays, but basically it's good to go. And we have what we have the Orange Pi OS welcome screen, Orange Pi Arch Linux, um, and there's just a bunch of stuff about about the uh, Orange Pi, etc. What do we have on first glance on the desktop? We have the file system. Opening that, it's just uh, what we have installed here. Um, Let's go down here to the file menu. We've got our terminal. Launch that. That was pretty snappy. File manager, mail reader, web browser, frequently used, favorites, all applications. We've got multimedia, settings, system, graphics. So let's go to system. Uh, so we have uh, Calamares, HTOP, that's your system resources, and tells you what you're using. CPU usually. Normally you can just run top from uh, your terminal, but let's give you an idea. CPU is 4.5%, barely doing anything. Um, where's the memory? 7.5%, maybe 10% memory. So not bad. We got hardware, local, locality, we got task manager, we got file manager, XFCE terminal installed. Task manager is going to give you a little bit more Windows maybe-esque old school look for your, um, instead of running HTOP or TOP, but all in all, it's pretty much the same. You can see which is using the most memory, which is your desktop. So we're using 846 meg of, th of the 3.8 gig, uh, you know, four gig of memory available. So CPU is spiking around three to two to nine percent. If I move the mouse, oh, we got 21 percent. All right, not too shabby. Um, you can add all processes. You can kind of configure it to, to your liking. Oh, so we've got network configuration manager, Bluetooth adapters. Hmm. 
none of the Bluetooth keyboards are connecting. Well, that is a shame. Kind of annoying. Regular keyboard works. We're gonna test uh, YouTube browsing. Currently have one gig of our four gig use of memory and we're gonna go to watch a YouTube video. But um, as you see here, I plugged into the USB-C dongle, which has USB, which has a Ethernet port. It connected. A little bit slow browsing YouTube, but it's resolving it. You can see this is real time. All right, so let's see if we can get my YouTube page up and running and let's see if we can watch a 1080p video. It's not the fastest machine on the block. Okay, this should be a 1080p. All right, let's look at the uh, Ubuntu Raspberry Pi video with the orange pie. All right, we're not getting sound out. That's another thing, I mean, I'm capturing, it's, if, if I wasn't capturing, it should go right through the HDMI output for sound, but it's not. Another problem here, folks, can't get sound to work, can't get any output, I can't get anything. So yeah, I can't get any sound output at all through the HDMI cable. Um, I've troubleshot it and I don't know what's going on. I can't figure it out. Volume control, I'll put devices, all I have is analog. I've switched the HDMI cable, it doesn't work. So anyways, we are at a conundrum and we have no sound, so you're gonna listen to me talk. Um, right now we're at 720p, 60 and we're buffering, buffering. It can load the page. It, does, it seems like it's got plenty of um, power to do that, but it is buffering a lot, even at 720. And that's not a good example, but if you see here, having dropped frames, dropped frames, speeding up, drop, drop, drop. And it's even worse if I go to 1080p and it's like a slideshow. Go to a news channel or something, just normal web browsing. It's slow to load. Like we are not even loading a normal web page at a decent speed. I think it's just this unit. It's not like the fastest in the world. You've got different backgrounds here. This looks like windows. But, uh, and you can do a bunch of different things here. But so far, this has not impressed me. The sound should work out of the box and it's not. Um, and it can't even play 1080p, can't play 720p on YouTube. Um, it's struggling a bit, even with 4 gig of RAM. I think the processor and video is, the video GPU is really struggling. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna see if I can't get the Ubuntu 5.4 kernel to run. We maxed out around 1.6 gig of RAM out of the 4 gig. All right, well, let's try Ubuntu 5.4 kernel.
Got the Ubuntu 5.4 kernel and I have the SanDisk card again. It is not working, not working. Look, usually we get a green light here if it was booting. There's the recommended card and it will not run Ubuntu of the 6.1 kernel and it won't run the 5.4 kernel. Piece of junk. Here we are now. We are going to try to boot up Debian. This is Debian Bullseye and it seems to be booting. If this is the case, that'll make two out of the four OS's I've tried that'll work. Looks like Debian has loaded. Uh, the screen's a bit off. I'm not able to switch any of the resolutions. It could be that it's still loading. I don't know. Let me run it directly again. The system is having a nice time with the capture card, so I'm about giving up on that. It's just not having any of it. And is it better? Nope, not better. The menus are all goofed up. Uh, let me restart it. Took forever to start up. It just doesn't want to work, everyone. So I rebooted it and Debian still has only 1080p resolution. I cannot change it. It will not work. And if you go to advanced, we got nothing. If you go up here, you see the menu bars are out of scope of what you know you would be able to see regardless. Um, basically, you are guessing at things, but you can see the things and it's probably the monitor, I'm not sure. Uh, network configs, display settings, you saw it didn't work. Um, power manager, panel, orange pie config. Over here, accessories, development, graphics, Chromium web browser, multimedia, has the same pulse, um, multimedia. And we've got a couple things like task manager. If we load task manager, can see we're only pulling 481 meg out of the four gig. And we come up here, Chromium, let's launch Chromium. See the CPU spiked to 49%, 577, almost 600 meg. CPU's at 40%, 30%, 20, it's going down. So, all right, let's see if we can go to YouTube. It seems a little bit more responsive with Debian. Not a lot, but um, YouTube is not happening. <laughs> we're just like, uh, we're dying. We're dying here. All right, well, we'll try this video. It's 1080p, let's see what it defaults to though. And let's see if there's any sound in this Debian edition either. All right, we're at 480p. We have no sound still. Um, the CPU is pretty much pegged just playing this 480p video back. 480p is, it, it looks good, but I can't get sound, so this is really annoying. All right. No sound again out of this output. Seriously. Well, 480p works, but there's no sound, so what does it matter? 720p in a windowed mode. I'm using a gig of RAM. CPU is max. So we're trying to get 720p and we are not having it. Here we go. 720p dropped frames. 
I am not even going to try 1080p because it's not going to happen. Alright, so this is not a great experience so far. I, I don't know why we can't select any video outputs, nothing um, is not working well. We are trying to load Android and uh, we are not getting anything. So my final thoughts. This orange pie 0-2W on paper the specs look great but in my personal experience in trying to use the damn thing it is horrible. I mean I've got an orange pie 5. I did have a little bit of a learning curve for that but I got it to work with a lot of the different images that orange pie had on their site. This would only work with Orange Pie Arch in Debian kind of works. None of the five, none of the 6.1 Ubuntu kernels work. None of the 5.4 kernels work. I use the recommended fast SanDisk cards. I use a Samsung micro SD card. Uh, it doesn't matter. There's something wrong with either this board or the images. Um, Android doesn't work either. The one you would think would work doesn't work. You know, you can compare apples to oranges with Raspberry Pi, but when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, it's got lower specs, but the support is huge. You know, if I go to Raspberry Pi site and pull down an image um, and use their flasher or even Billion Etcher, nine times out of 10, it's gonna work. And when I went to Orange Pi's website, they didn't even have a valid encryption cert, HTTPS, for their site. To say I'm a little bit let down would be an understatement. Can we even play back 720p on this board without dropping frames? No. I, and it's not just me. I read the reviews and the forums prior to getting this unit. I wanted to see, well, maybe they have problems. Maybe they didn't know how to extract it. Maybe they didn't know how to flash it or something like that, you know? And I'm thinking, yeah, it's probably just user error. No, it's probably not. This is a bad unit, crappy images. I don't know. They can't all be saying the same thing and, be, and not be right because they are right. I've experienced the same crap. There's problems after problems. It's a headache, it's a nightmare. Yeah, and people were like, oh, you should try using the SanDisk because it's the only micro SD card that they recommend to use. I've got one. I use it in my Raspberry Pi 5. It works fine on everything else. Doesn't work here. It doesn't matter if you use the same image for the Samsung or not. Those Ubuntu images don't work. And then the Debian, you know, you couldn't get the screen to resolve right. You couldn't get anything other than 1080p and even that wasn't even in uh, spec for the monitor. I wasted an entire day farting around with this stupid Orange Pi 2 w zero, whatever. And can I recommend it? Mm, no, buy a, anything else. Buy a lower powered, you know, zero, you know, two, whatever from Raspberry Pi. You won't have the RAM. You won't be able to run a lot of the other things, you know? But you can't run that stuff anyways on this stupid orange pie. So yeah, at least you might be able to limp along and get something to work. Maybe look up another vendor like the Redaxa or whatever that is. They have good specs. Maybe they have good OS, I don't know. At this point in time, I'm not recommending this. And if you have different experiences, comment below. But this is just my personal experience, what I went through. And it wasn't worth the effort, to tell you the truth. It wasn't even worth the money to buy this thing. Buy a Raspberry Pi, buy something else, buy a larger Orange Pi maybe, Orange Pi 5 Plus. At least the one I had worked. So thanks for watching. Remember this tech.